Welcome back to the shop, everybody. What I have in front of me here is a camera cage that I recently purchased. Um, for those that aren't aware, a camera cage is a machine component that you mount your camera in that gives you various ways of attaching external camera accessories to it, such as external microphones, external monitors, batteries, um, pre-amplifiers, all kinds of stuff. Um, in the case of this one, this is from Small Rig. This is designed specifically for my GH5. It has um, a native rail over on this side, a bunch of quarter th 20 and 3 8 threaded holes on it. And then the top handle has a hot shoe mount. And then I paid for the extra 15 millimeter carbon fiber rod, which really isn't relevant here. Overall, I've used this a couple times already and I'm really happy with it. There's only one thing that I'm not really pleased with, and it's a minor thing, but I'm gonna fix it this evening. And that is the screw here that you secure your camera in place with. And it's a slotted screw. So let me bring you in close and I'll show you what the real problem is with it. So here you can see the screw close up. Um, the problem I have with this is that it's a slotted screw and that's really a problem for two reasons. One, because everything else related to camera gear is usually quarter 20 socket head cap screw. So therefore I have a ton of extra um, Allen wrenches just laying around. I got one in every one of my camera bags. I got several up in the office with my camera gear. So this is just generally annoying. And then the second thing is, this is the largest screwdriver that I have headwise. And it's still sloppy in here. And the reason for that is, is because this, it's, this is supposed to be a feature. It's designed so that you can supposedly take a coin, like a quarter or a nickel or something, and use it to tighten it down. But one, that's kind of weak. I'd much rather use, uh, you know, an Allen wrench. It's got a long handle and I can feel how much force I'm torquing down on it. So what I'm going to do is um, take this. This is a um, flanged button head stainless steel cord 20 um, cap screw. Um, let's bring this one in here. This is one of the ones that I've already machined down. This uh, essentially was a prototype. And as you can see here, it's not very hard. I've got to um, turn down the reduced section and then turn the um, diameter of the flange section down and then, of course, bring it down to the appropriate length. So for those that aren't aware, this is a base plate, Arca Swiss, an Arca Swiss base plate here. Let me get it on fr in frame so you can actually see it. And how this works is that there's a threaded section here in the base, if I can get the screw to go in. There we go. And what the reduce section does is it lets it slide in the slot without falling out. So I've got everything set up over at the lathe. Let me go over and show you what you have. And I'll also explain what the difficulties in machining this part are going to be. So I've gone ahead and mounted the socket head cap screw in a little makeshift um, collet, if you will which is basically just a chunk of aluminum that's been turned down to a known diameter, um, tapped, quarter 20, and then slit so that I, it'll actually clamp down on the threads and give me a really good register on the threads so that I can get a good grip on it. But also at the same time, it won't crush the threads like, if you, like you would do if you just chucked it up into the jaws themselves. So the first thing I need to do is turn the flange down to a known diameter, or I should say a known diameter, down to the diameter that I want it to be. That should be the final pass. Let me take a quick measurement. There's nothing critical on these dimensions. Um, yeah, that's within tolerance, so that's good to go. You switch out the tool here. So this is a, get it on screen for you. Custom little, gro custom little grooving tool that I made. It is, um, just a quarter inch high speed steel blank that I've ground down. It has um, the actual width of the groove is only 50 thousandths and it protrudes out about 200 thousandths. 
so that I can go ahead and groove this. It's like, this is probably the longest part of this whole process was actually making this tool. I forget. This is not a great grade of stainless. I wouldn't even call it a grade. It's 18.8, which is kind of a catch-all for stainless. I mean, technically, I believe 303, 304, a whole bunch of the other three series fit in. But in general, I've had good and horrible luck with this. Of the prototypes that I've done, I think I'm going to have bad luck. This seems to be work hardening and thus chattering. So I'll try and tune the volume down for you so you don't have to deal with that. Okay, this is going to take a couple minutes here. Not minutes, but a couple seconds. I got a bunch of little burrs and stuff I got to pick out of here so I can take a measurement. And that's within tolerance. 0.175 was the target, plus or minus five thousandths, and this is 0.174. So that's done. Now it's time to turn it around and bring it down to length. So the process is similar. I've gone ahead and just threaded the bolt all the way in up against the shoulder on the um, bushing here, the makeshift bushing. It's the same thing, just in this case, mount it, thread out. Make sure the bushing sticks out a little bit because we need to touch off of it. Now I can reset my zero. There we go. Now all I have to do is face it to length.
Okay, it's down to length. Now I'm gonna put a, where's that tool at? There it is. A tiny, tiny chamfer on the end. Only about 30 thousandths or so. And that is it. One custom screw to meet my needs. Um, I'm probably gonna turn it around and polish it, but that's it. So let me do that and then we'll go back to the bench. Sorry, I'm back to the bench. So here you go. Here's a close up of everything. Here is the um, makeshift bushing. As you can see, just a chunk of aluminum turned to half an inch in diameter, um, 0.4 inches long, tapped quarter 20 through the center, and then slit over at the mill with a slitting saw. Let's throw that original one out here of four of them that I made. I only need one, so I've got plenty of extras. And then hopefully this gives you a little bit better shot of the um, little custom grooving tool that I made. There you can see it's even it's not even the full height of the bit because it basically just got ground away to nothing. Um, you can see I got a little back rake there, and then I don't know if this will focus or not. Probably not. Um, I've got about seven degrees of side clearance on each side, and then I've got the same about two or three degrees of um, clearance. So it really looks like you can't really tell, but it looks like a dovetail from above if you were to zoom in on it even closer than this. So I hope you guys enjoy this. This was a fairly simple project. As I mentioned, it took longer to make this bit than it did to do all the machining on pretty much all of these parts.